Hello everyone, welcome to Study IQ. I am your vocabulary expert, Dr. Gaurav Garg, and in this video, I am starting a new series, which is Word Power Made Easy. Word Power Made Easy is name of a very very renowned book, which is very very famous across the globe, written by the legendary Norman Lewis. In fact, I myself used this book way back around in 2011, I believe, and this book really empowers your learning because it discourages rote learning or Sometimes when we can't learn words, we tend to memorize them rather than understanding the words. So what this book does is actually encourages us to understand the words and break down to its very granular form. And that is why that is the beauty of this book. So I encourage all of you to buy this book. It is very reasonably priced, less than $3. And this in this video, I will tell you how to talk about doctors. I'm sure we all and most of you must have visited a doctor sometimes in your you know in your life and there are various types of doctors specializing in various disciplines and how to talk about doctors that is how to remember which doctor specializes in which field for example if I tell you dermatologist now dermatologist is a doctor specializing in which field of medical science so I'll tell you very short tricks regarding that and in fact these tricks are not devised by me but the great Norman Lewis so here we go but even before I start the video you know, is the word doctor, is it a verb or is it a noun? Now you know that noun are person, place or thing, right? And verb is something that denotes an action. Verbs can be of many types like transitive, intransitive. Now the word doctor is both. It's a noun also because doctor is after all a person and it can be used as a verb also. So how it is used as a verb? Because doctor as a noun is quite understood but as a verb quite not. So look at this sentence. The reports could have been doctored. What does it mean? So let's say there is a conspiracy. Okay, some person commits suicide and his body goes to a doctor for post-mortem, right? And uh, the doctor finds out that it was a suicide, but there is pressure on the doctor from the authorities to prove that it was not a suicide and it was a murder. So the doctor doctors the report, right? What does it mean? So he basically falsified the report or he tried to deceive others by changing the report, changing the content or appearance of the report. So when we change the content or appearance of a report, a document, a picture in order to cheat someone, deceive someone or in order to make somebody a fool or present a completely false picture uh, to what that is there, then that is called doctoring something. So you can doctor a audio tape, video tape, anything. So that is called doctoring something that is changing, amending or altering something in a negative way. So that is how the verb uh, doctor is used. But we are mainly concerned with noun in this case. In this video, I will cover the doctor as a noun. So if I ask you, uh, what are these doctors called? A doctor who specializes in internal medicine, female medicine, pregnancy, childbirth, skin disorders, eye, heart problems. So by the time this video finishes, you will be in a very good position to answer most of the questions. So for example, some of the doctors I have written here, but you know, idea is not to memorize. For example, if I tell you uh, a doctor for skin is called a dermatologist, a doctor who treats your eyes is called an ophthalmologist. That's okay. You can uh, do rote learning, but it won't be very effective. You will probably forget it in a day or two. So that is why the best way to learn vocabulary is to learn by word roots. And that is why I will use a lot of word roots to explain to you. And by the time the video finishes, the way you look at this table will be very different. So let's begin origin and related words. Now, even before I start the core part of the video, please note that English as a language is made from mostly from 60% of the English is made from either the Greek language or the Latin language. And that is why most of these root words are taken from Greek or Latin. Now the first root is internus, which means inside. Now the word is very, very clear. It is self-explanatory. So internal, for example, internal security. So something that is towards the inside that is called internus and from this we come to a word which is internist now internist is a medical specialist in internal diseases right internal diseases any doctor who specializes in internal diseases is called internist in fact the branch of medicine that is most popular these days is internal medicine so any doctor uh, he, if he is a for example physician he'll say 
I have specialized in internal medicine. And the person who is a learner basically is called an intern. So for example, in India, the, the degree that you require to become a doctor, it is called MBBS. Now MBBS is a five and a half years old curriculum. And the first four and a half years is you learn the theoretical aspects and also some of the clinical aspects. But the last one year is the year when you actually practice just like a junior doctor. When you behave like a doctor, you work, you train under senior doctors that is called intern your internship period and the person is called intern the student at that point in time is called an intern so intern is a student or a trainee who works sometimes without pay in order to gain work experience or satisfy requirements for a qualification so i hope you have understood the difference between internist and an intern internist is basically a very specialized doctor an intern is a learner and it's very, very possible that an intern is learning the ropes under a under the patronage of an internist. So the word internal simply means something that is situated on the inside, like we have seen internal security. Now, I want to focus a bit on this word because I really like this word intern. So intern is someone who is learning. Now, that so can I say that this person is relatively new because he's learning, he's still not skilled enough. Yes, he is new and anyone who is new, we call novice, N-O-V-I-C-E. Novice is a person who is an intern, who is basically learning. Can we say he's a beginner? Yes, he's a beginner, of course. So he is called a tyro. Tyro, novice, intern, they are all synonyms. Now, whom does an intern train from? A coach, right? A coach is called a mentor. And someone who takes training from a mentor or a coach is called a mentee. Therefore, mentee also means tyro and novice. So a student, for example, a typical student uh, is called a apprentice. Apprentice. Now, apprentice is someone who is basically taking training. And the person who is taking training is a trainee. And the, you know, the training is therefore called apprenticeship. Okay, apprenticeship is the training and the person who takes the training is called either a trainee or a apprentice so these are some very very important words in fact there is another very important word which is called probationer probationer is also someone who is learning and he is said to be on probation right for example a probationary officer he is on probation so for first two years for example in a bank this guy will learn the ropes learn the business learn the art of his job and then only later on he will be promoted so the words intern novice tyro mentee apprentice and probationer trainee they all mean the same and these are exceptional words so that is how you need to connect the words now there are two words neolithic and paleolithic which of these words would mean new stone age and which one would mean old stone age can you tell me now neo the word neo means new now i told you an intern right so intern is someone who is learning he is new he is a novice right and such person you can also say he is a neophyte so neo means new again he is new so neophyte is also a very good synonym for the word novice and intern now neolithic versus paleolithic the word neo means new and the word paleo it means old so if you are if you are consuming paleo diet which means you are consuming the diet which probably your forefathers ate and new stone age would be neolithic and old stone age would be paleolithic now another important thing here to remember is this lithic the word comes from lithos which means stone so that is why the crust part of earth we also call lithosphere not the entire crust the top part the outermost part of the crust is the lithosphere because it is made up of hard rocks stones so the word lithic comes from lithos meaning stone so new stone age would be neolithic and old stone age is paleolithic so if i say what can be paleontology do you have any idea what is paleontology okay before uh, paleontology what are fossils what are fossils so you have a tree leaves would fall of course similarly animals animals would die and after uh, you know their burial that is the dead bodies of the animals the leaves of a tree they all become fossils they get metamorphosized over a period of time and they become fossils so the study of fossils is called paleontology 
and fossils are of course not new they are very very old or archaic or ancient whichever way you look at it now let's talk about a very very important doctor doctors for women now what is the difference see the word for women is gyne that's a greek word gyne right and the word miss in english we use for denoting misunderstandings for it's a negative word right so for example the word misunderstanding now miss is used as a negative word similarly mismanagement mismanagement miss again shows a negative connotation so if i say a person is a misogynist what would that mean misogynist now gyne means women means means something negative so misogynist is a person who hates women who doesn't really respect women and tries to pull down the women in every possible way tries to suppress oppress women that kind of a person is called misogynist so that is how you can relate words that is the beauty of english language even if you don't know a word you can always try and um, look at the options if you are in an exam or try to work out something for example let me give you a word which is polygyny now what could this possibly mean what is the meaning of the word poly the word poly means multiple for example uh, polygon now polygon has many sides for example a square or a rhombus they are polygons for example a pentagon is a polygon so poly means many right so polygyny would mean what multiple women so polygyny means a uh, the practice of having multiple females as your partner that is called polygyny so polygyny is practiced in uh, religion islam for example uh, and uh, polygyny is common in a lot of countries similarly if i say the opposite that is polyandry for example in mahabharata there was a character called draupadi who had five husbands so she was practicing polyandry it is the completely opposite of polygyny and how this word has taken its origin is from the word andros which means men so the word andro and gyne they are completely opposite they means men and women so who is a gynecologist now gyne means gyne means women right gynecologist is a doctor who is skilled in the treatment of women's diseases for example if a woman has irregular periods so whom she will go to a gynecologist because she is going for a very specific female centric problem and the very very similar doctor is obstetrician in fact in today's time and age gynecologist and obstetrician are used interchangeably because whenever somebody trains in gynecology the person invariably gets trained in obstet obstetrician uh, in obstetrics and becomes a obstetrician so that is how you need to know gynecologist and obstetrician there is a small difference which is obstetrician is someone who is qualified to practice in obstetrics that is pregnancy a doctor who is skilled in child delivery parturition as it is called is a obstetrician and gynecologist is basically any doctor who is specialized in diseases which concern women that is the difference so let me tell you the origin of the word so obstetrics when means specialty of child delivery and the doctor will be called obstetrician the word comes from the latin word obstetrix which means midwife now who is a midwife so midwife is a female who assists in child delivery so whenever there is a there is a child being born there will be females who will assist the the lady who is actually giving the birth to the child and she will be called midwife now in in, in modern lingo we really don't use the word midwife we just say nurse but the nurse is a very different word to a midwife because midwife is only specialized in uh, delivery of the child whereas nurse is a much bigger term nurse can be specialized into anything so therefore uh, the word obstetrician ician means expert right so an expert in obstetrics is obstetrician so i hope you have understood the difference between gynecologist and obstetrician so now a question for you tell me true or false a physician physician is a someone who is expert in physics true or false so ician means expert right so is he doc is he uh, expert in physics so no it's false not an expert in physics but physiology so physician is basically a doctor so what is the meaning of physiology so physiology is the study of the organ systems the working of the organ systems of the human body for example you have a digestive system which runs from your mouth till the anus uh you have an excretory system kidneys are responsible for your excretory function liver also to some extent skin also to some extent that is excretory system similarly you have a muscular system skeletal system lot of organ systems they work uh, in in harmony in our body and uh, a doctor who is specialized in those is a physician so physician is basically your what you call a normal doctor who is able to 
diagnose all the diseases. Now a physician is a journalist, he is not exactly a specialist. So for example, you must have seen doctors writing MBBS, then MD and in bracket they write general physician. Uh, so general physician is able to uh, look at you know all the maladies that you present before him but he is not exactly a specialist. So if you have a heart problem, he will refer you to a cardiologist or a doctor for the heart maladies. So the person who is specialized in physics is called a physicist, not a physician. Physicist, okay. So that is how you can be tricked. Some words are very, very tricky. Now who is a clinician and what is the difference between a doctor, a physician and a clinician? So a physician can be a clinician, right? Or he can, I mean, he has to be a clinician ultimately. But is he a good clinician or a bad clinician? So I'll tell you the difference. See, doctor is a general term, right? A physician is someone who is specialized in uh, the physiology of the human body, right? A clinician is someone, now Asian means expert and clinician means expert in clinic. Now what does this actually mean? So you must have heard that Indian doctors, they are, you know, very, very respected in UK and USA and foreign countries. Why is that? Because Indian doctors are more clinicians than technicians. Now, what is the difference between a clinician and a technician? Is a technician not a doctor? So here is the difference. Let's say you go to a doctor in a... So 70% of India lives in villages, right? So let's say you go to a doctor who is stationed in a village. Now, for diagnosis, there are no, there are no uh, very, very sophisticated instruments available to him. Technology is very, very limited in third world countries like India, which are still developing countries. So doctor will rely upon his own skill, his own knowledge for accurate diagnosis and not really on machines. Whereas if you see the doctors abroad, they rely a lot on the laboratory studies, the, da the data from laboratories, a uh, lot of machines which can give them ready-made diagnosis. So that is the difference. So Indian doctors are very good clinicians and when they go abroad for practicing, they are further empowered by the machines and that takes their skills to some very, very good level. But if you see a foreign doctor and if he comes to India for practicing, he will not be empowered with all the latest technology and machinery and therefore he will find it very difficult to diagnose without the help of those machines. That is why Indian doctors, they take their skills to next level because they have already learned the ropes without machines. So when they are actually empowered with machines abroad, then they become very, very good. They surpass the foreign doctors, so to say. So clinician is a doctor having direct contact with patients rather than being involved with theoretical or laboratory studies. So who can be a tactician? So someone who is an expert in tactics. What are tactics? Tactics are the strategy that you make to, uh, to outpower your opponent. That is, so for example, Chanakya, the great Chanakya, uh, from the Mauryan era was a great tactician, right? So tactics, if I say a person is very tactful and if a person is very tactless, now which of these would mean a person is, well, not so uh, clever. So tactful will be very clever and tactless will be someone who lacks uh, cleverness, someone who is uh, basically a fool, you know, tactless, ha has no clue when a problem arises what to do. That person is tactless and tactful is basically a person who is very hands-on, who can think on his feet if required, that person is tactful. So who can be a mortician? It's a very good word. Now the word more, mori, m-o-r-t, mort, they all, all these words mean death, right? So more, mori, mort, morts, death. So if I say, let's say mort, okay? If I add al, now man is mortal or immortal? So mortal is something that will die one day. So man, everybody, every living being in this world dies one day. So mortal, right? Comes from the word root mort. Immortal would mean some, something that uh, will never get destroyed or never die. That is immortal. So uh, can you name me something that is immortal? So people say that truth is immortal. Some say God is immortal and uh, very, very abstract. So we'll not go into those things. Now mortician. Let's say if I say a person is moribund, what does that mean? Which means almost uh, on the verge of death, you know, will die in probably one or two days, moribund, about to die, uh, inevitable that the person will die, moribund, probably in the last stage of cancer or probably in the last stage of AIDS. Similarly, if I say, let's say more, so if a person is in a morose mood, what is morose? Means very, very sad, gloomy, sullen. 
that is morose again more means death so anything related to death is always sad and gloomy right so who is a mortician Ishian means expert a expert in death i mean it looks weird no so mortician the concept is very popular in the western countries Ex for example the people the christians for example because christians uh, they bury the body in a casket and a person who does all that who is expert in funeral or the performing the last rites is a mortician right now who is a dietitian diet is your the food that you intake and Ishian is an expert so let's say you suffer from diabetes so now of course you cannot take every food that you desire so you would require a dietitian to sort out your diet so dietitian is a doctor who is specialized in the forming a timetable for your food and suggesting you food and what to take and what not to take etc for the benefit of your body now let's talk about children oh my children innocent children whenever they go to doctors they always cry like anything probably because of the fear of injection or anything so greek word paidos means child aitria means medical healing and ishian expert so pediatrician pediatrician has all the three child it aitria that is uh, medical healing and ishian is an expert so who is a pediatrician is a doctor who specializes in uh, diseases of children whenever a child faces any trouble you take the child to a pediatrician and these doctors are very very specialized in treating children now what is the difference between a general doctor why can't you take a child to a normal physician because physicians they will find it tough to control the child so pediatrician whereas will have studied child psychology in detail that is a part of the curriculum and therefore would be in a better position to handle the child treatment is only one part of the uh, the entire process you have to actually first control the child you know win the trust of the child only then will you be, you be able to treat the child so what is pedagogy now please note it is gogy not gogy okay pedagogy pedagogy means teaching teaching am i teaching you right now yes that is pedagogy so the word comes from pedos means child and agogos means leading okay leading or showing someone the direction so when you teach someone you are actually treating that person like a child and you are showing him the direction right he the person uh, whom you are teaching will tend to follow your footsteps will you are showing him the direction so you are teaching and a person who teaches is a teacher in other words he is a pedagogue okay now this is pedagogy and this is pedagogue so these are some variations in english that you need to know you have to be also very sure be sure about your pronunciation so if i now ask you what could be the meaning of demagogue okay it is demagogue so what could be the meaning of this so the word demo or demo means the root okay not the word it means people okay and agogos means leading someone who is leading them so who leads a person leader right so demo means demo means people and gog means leading someone who is leading them so leading people who who leads people it's a leader so for example the prime minister who is he he is a demagogue and the word crazy c r a c y crazy means government okay government is called crazy so what could be democracy crazy means government and demo means uh, people so a government of the people for the people by the people is called a democracy right so what could be aristocracy now you know that crazy is government and aristo means nobility the very elite people you know who consider themselves superior in knowledge in uh, well in money with respect to money they are all the nobles so nobility is the government formed by the nobility is called aristocracy so like that you can uh, you can have some idea about the words even if you haven't heard the words before now let's talk about a doctor who specializes in skin diseases so the word derma it's a greek word derma it means skin so who is a dermatologist is a medical practitioner qualified to diagnose skin disorders right for example if you have lesions on your skin if you have allergic reactions on your skin there are a lot of diseases uh, there are a lot of systemic diseases also that have manifestations on skin for example uh, systemic lupus erythematosus or various diseases i won't go into too much many technical details so so a doctor dermatologist specializes in skin now it's interesting the word epi means upon means towards the outer side so for example you know that uh, let's say this is your hand okay these are your fingers 
now I'm terrible at drawing and probably you would have made that out by now so let's say you are injecting a needle so this is your vein right and you probably would know that we give the injections in veins not the arteries because veins are superficial arteries are quite deep so you um, you try to explore the vein so you will you will insert the needle where will you insert it in the skin right but skin has many layers the outermost layer is called epidermis epidermis and the word hypo it always means something below something beneath so you will go from epidermis that is the outermost layer to the inner layer where you will find the vein so you will go from epidermis to hypodermis so the needle will be called hypodermic needle right and the word hypo always means below or beneath so one question for you so you know sugar in our blood we measure in two ways that is fasting and postprandial that is after a meal so after a meal your blood sugar should not exceed 140 milligram per deciliter but let's say you tend to measure it and uh, you see that it is 400 milligram per deciliter now are you hypoglycemic or hyperglycemic so hypo means below you are not below you are i mean you are quite a handful 400 milligram per deciliter so you are hyperglycemic right hyperglycemic means you are diabetic that is called hyperglycemia glycemia means uh, you know when the glucose is dissolved in your blood we use the word glycemia for that so hyperglycemia means more sugar in your blood than optimum now epidermis would mean what the outer layer of the cells covering an organism that is the outermost layer of the skin okay now who is a taxidermist taxidermist is basically a scientist who uh, who you know skins uh, an animal you know who skins an animal then he prepares he mounts that animal he fills something you know remove the skin of a dead animal for example then you make it look original by filling something inside it like cotton or other artificial uh, artificial substances look at look at this here you must have seen uh, you know various articles like this now this is a real skin but inside they have filled it up with something like the feather of the birds or cotton and to make it look real that scientist is called taxidermist what is the meaning of pachyderm derm means skin and pachy means thick so the animals with very very thick skin like elephant rhinoceros etc what is dermatitis now derma means skin itis this is a very very important word in medicine itis never forget it itis means inflammation when you have inflammation anywhere now inflammation means what that is you will have redness red area because of swelling uh, you will have increased temperature there are some signs of inflammation like there might be loss of function like that so itis word we use for that for so what is dermatitis that is general skin irritation skin inflammation for example if i say vasculitis what could this mean vasculitis so vessels are your arteries veins which carry blood so vasculitis will be inflammation of the blood vessels let's say i say arthritis what could be the meaning of arthritis the word arthros means your joints for example your knee joint your elbow joint so if they swell that is that is swelling of the joints is arthritis similarly you can have anything for example you have conjunctiva in your eye so you may have conjunctivitis that is inflammation of the conjunctiva of the eye so like that itis is very very frequent in uh, in uh, medicine let's talk about the one of the most beautiful organs that we have which is our eyes our uh, gateway to the entire world the greek word for eye is ophthalmos but the latin word for eye is oculus right so greek word and latin word and i told you english is made from both the greek and the latin so greek word ophthalmos means eye and logos means science or study so from logos you have the word logi so for example biology study of the living beings is biology logi comes from logos meaning studying something or science of something so the science of studying living beings or the study of living beings is called biology similarly zoology study of animals like that so who is an ophthalmologist ophthalmologist is a doctor who is specialist specialist in the eyes you know diseases related to eyes like you have cataract you have glaucoma and various diseases now who is an oculist now the latin word for eye is oculus so ophthalmologist is also called oculist but oculist these days in modern english we don't really use oculist we use ophthalmologist only now some other words with this root ocular ocular would mean what anything related to eye is ocular so for example if i say my ocular muscles have become weak which means my eye muscles have become weak oculus means eye ocular means something related to eye what could binoculars mean 
binoculars you know they are used to uh, see something that is quite far off in a you trying to enlarge it and see so that you have clarity of vision you use binoculars now please note that the word binoculars is used as such you don't you know you won't use binocular because that's not a word so binoculars the word means many binoculars if you want to say one then you have to say a pair of binoculars a pair of binoculars means one one quantity you know and if you say just binoculars it means many binoculars but the but it's not like that the word is binocular singular and binoculars is plural nothing like that the word is binoculars only now there are two important people one is optometrist if you go to a doctor who specializes in eyes for example eye specialist then it, the chances are that the doctor won't see you directly you know he won't engage with you directly first there'll be a person who will check your eyesight your vision measure your vision now look at the word metrist it comes from the word metric which means to measure something and that is why unit of measurement is meter they are all very very related right similarly geometry you measure a lot of shapes and sizes in geometry by angles and everything and you also use the word mensuration there for sometimes because to uh, the word mensuration comes from the word metron means measurement so what are you doing in mensuration you are basically measuring different sizes different uh, shapes etc that is mensuration and uh, then you have the words opsis and opticos which means vision so what is your vision so if your vision is perfect you say six by six my vision is six by six means what my vision is perfect you know there is no um, there is no loss of vision and uh, optometrist would be the person you know who will engage you first will measure your eyesight check your vision and then refer you to the specialist to the doctor and doctor will only verify what the optometrist says and then what will happen let's say the doctor says no your eyesight is not six by six it is let's say uh, it is you have a number of let's say minus two so that means minus two means what you are not able to see far off objects but you are able to see near of objects so then uh, you will need to wear specs right so whom will you go to optician he is also a vision expert but he is basically a person who sells spectacles who is basically a businessman optician so that is the difference between optometrist optometrist will engage you before meeting the doctor and when doctor has prescribed you a set of uh, spectacles or glasses then you go to optician to buy those and vision now you know what vision means your eyesight your whether your vision is perfect the ability to see so vision if i uh, give any related word vista for example now vis again means to see image so vista means a very very beautiful view let's say there are trees and you are seeing something between the trees there is a panoramic view it's a beautiful view that is called vista in fact there was a windows also windows vista i remember then visage what does visage means now vis means to see right vision it is it has uh, derived from the word vision so visage means your looks your aesthetics how your face is looking right now your personality outer personality you know your whether you are presentable or not that is all visage so now we are uh, some way through in the video can you guess these words so i'll help you one who sells optical devices is called a optician he sells optical devices not optometrist okay optician outer layer of skin is called epidermis a medical graduate serving his apprenticeship is intern who is learning who is a trainee one who treats childhood diseases is a pediatrician another title for ophthalmologist is oculist however this word is not used so much in the modern language one who stuffs the skin of animals is a taxidermist so i hope you you were able to solve at least uh, four or five out of six now let's talk about a very important branch which is uh, the doctor who specializes in bones muscles he is called orthopedist why because the word orthos means straight or correcting something that is malaligned so what is something that is malaligned or abnormal or uh, misaligned and you are correcting it well a broken bone for example how do the doctors they treat the defects of the bone either through surgery casting put a cast around the bone to straighten it or you use braces you can also use a plate and screws titanium plates these days are used frequently to uh, correct the bones or for reduction of the fracture etc so that doctor is called orthopedist right orthos means straight so orthopedics is the branch in which orthopedist specializes in now what is orthodox thinking 
so uh, the word dox comes from doxa which means opinion right and ortho means straight so if you have straight opinion means what you are not very contemporary you are not uh, so much of a rebel you basically believe in what others believe in very straightforward thinking right so orthodox means conventional conventional not very rebel conventional thinking so to say old type of thinking anti-diluvian thinking so you know and one is modern thinking who is a who is a rebel who is a iconoclast iconoclast is a person who does not confirm who is not compliant with the already established beliefs in the society and tries to break those beliefs and create something new that is iconoclast so it is completely different a orthodox person or a conventional person someone who has orthodox thinking cannot be an iconoclast so odontos means tooth a doctor who treats uh, diseases related to tooth is a dentist now tooth is a singular word and teeth is the plural so who is an orthodontist ortho means straight so if a doctor he treats irregular teeth he tries to straighten the teeth using these wires he is called a orthodontist orthodontist is basically a dentist who specializes in the uh, irregularities of the teeth and jaws now let's talk about one of the most important doctors um, you know the breed of which we have an acute shortage of in our country the heart the heart word comes from the Greek word cardia, which means heart and logos, you know, is science or study. So cardia, the word is cardiologist. Cardiologist is a doctor who specializes in the treatment of heart diseases, right? Like heart fail, cardiac arrest, you know, heart attack, which is called myocardial infarction. Then cardiology is the branch which they actually study. So cardiologist studies, car you know, cardiology, the doctor of the heart. What is cardiac? Anything related to heart is a is called cardiac. For example, if I say heart fail, that is cardiac arrest. Cardiac means what? Arrest of the heart. And what is arrest? It means stop in, you know, uh, uh, seize, seizing of function of something. When something is has been working smoothly and suddenly it stops functioning, that is called arrest. Then cardiogram. Cardiogram is a product of cardiograph. Cardiograph is this, an instrument for recording heart muscle activity. As you can see here various waves are there which signify your heart activity and this is called cardiogram which comes out of a cardiograph machine and on the cardiogram will be written your muscle activity of your heart which will show uh, which will give some idea to the doctor whether your heart is functioning in the po best possible way or not now let's talk about nervous system the word nerve comes from the greek word neuron which means nerve nerve carries signals to your brain right there are afferent and efferent fibers so i won't go too technical but basically means for example if uh, on your hand i pour cold water that message will go to your brain that it is cold right only then you will feel it is cold water right so that who will take that message it is the nerves of the body so who is a neurologist neurologist is a doctor who is a specialist in the anatomy function and organic disorder of nerves and the nervous system right basically if you have anything wrong in your brain function wise anatomy wise then you go to a neurologist and the branch is called neurology which deals with the anatomy function and organic disorder of the nerves and the nervous system what is in nervous system it is your brain it is your spinal cord and even the brain has many parts like cerebrum cerebellum medulla etc now the word algos means pain so what is neuralgia the word neural means pain, nerve right and algos means pain so if you are having any nerve pain that is called neuralgia for example one neuralgia is very common which is called trigeminal neuralgia trigeminal is a nerve which even passes through your face and trigeminal neuralgia has immense pain it is a nerve pain then you also have neuritis so neur comes from nerve and itis means inflammation so inflammation of a nerve is called neuritis now what is the meaning of analgesic let's say uh, i went to play football and i had a bruise uh, or let's say i kind of uh, twisted my muscle right there is a concussion and i want to take a painkiller so what is a painkiller the word pain means algos right and if i add the word n in front of something that means lack of it for example aerobic aerobic means where there is a lot of air oxygen anaerobic means lack of air or oxygen so if we add the word n in front of anything if we prefix n before a word then it would mean lack of that so n algo means analgesic all right that is a painkiller is called analgesic for example diclofenac for example aspirin like that 
Now let's talk about the mind. The Greek word psych means spirit, soul or your mind. When you contemplate something, when you think internally, you know, when you dwell upon something, all that is related to your psyche. So what is psychosis? Psychosis is an abnormal condition of the mind. What is the meaning of abnormal condition? And such person will be called psychotic. And in short, we just say, are you a psycho? Which means what? Which means you are away from reality. Loss of reality is there. You are deluded. Deluded means what? You are seeing something. You are percepting something that is actually not there. For example, if your friend tells you that he is seeing ghosts, then what would you say to your friend? Well, you are a psycho or you are deluded. Hallucination. Hallucination also means percepting or seeing something, you know, when something is palpable to you that is actually not present, then you are having hallucination. If you are seeing ghost, if you are seeing, well, anything that is actually not there, you know, then it is said to be a psychotic state of mind and the person is called to be psychotic because he has psychosis. Now, one question that people ask me, what is the difference between neurologist and a psychiatrist? Very, very simple. Let's say you have a migraine. Okay. Now, migraine is a pain which is usually in one side of the, you know, in one side of the head, very, very severe pain and a person is not able to tolerate, you know, light and sound, sudden sound. There is a trigger for migraine. Even chocolates and wine, they can cause migraine. So, if you have a migraine headache, whom will you go to? A psychiatrist or a neurologist? Of course, migraine is related to the brain function, right? So, you will go to a neurologist. But let's say you have had a breakup from your girlfriend, you are kind of depressed. So, let's say you are depressed. Okay, you, you don't feel like eating anything, you are not yourself, you know, you need to get your act together, whom will you go to? You will go to a psychiatrist because every organ in your body is functioning well, you are just depressed, you are just not feeling the same, you know, that is you are suffering from a mental illness, you don't have any functional abnormality as such, you know, it is not like one part of your brain is not functioning. It is functioning. You are completely fit and fine, but still you are not happy. So you will go to a psychiatrist. So I hope you have understood the difference between neurologist and a psychiatrist. So this was my first video, Word Power Made Easy. And I hope you enjoyed the video. I tried to, uh, being a doctor myself, I tried to uh, break down the words in a very practical manner. And if you like the video, I'll make more. Write down in comments. And if you have seen this video, tell me who is a pediatrician. Who is a pediatrician? He is a doctor specializing in what? Pediatrician. So also uh, kindly share and subscribe if you want me to bring the videos in English language. I uh, try to bring every video in both Hindi and English language for the betterment of as many people as I can. Thank you so much.